Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting of May 28, 2019 at 6.45 p.m. Uh, at the Deerfield Municipal Offices in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and I'd like to start with a Pledge of Allegiance. If you all rise, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. And this meeting will be recorded, so if you come to the mic, please state your name and where, you're, uh, where you live. Or, um, so Thank you. Um, I first just want to th um, thank the community for coming out yesterday. It was a beautiful weekend and a beautiful day to celebrate our our fallen heroes. Um, we had a wonderful ceremony on the town common and then another one up at Deerfield Academy in the afternoon and uh, it was just really nice to see the community come together and support our veterans. Um, we have a we, first order of business is, is a uh, scheduled hearing um, at 645. Um, Peter Schuler, uh, MJ Kuehl Inc, um, Yankee Candle Company storage, uh, fuel storage hearing. Um, and I know Bill Swayze is here representing Yankee Candle. Come on up. Bill Swayze, uh, Director of Facilities for Yankee Candle. So this is for our 5 North Street property. Uh, we are in the process of building an R&D lab. And with that, we've got some additional HVAC equipment. And we've worked with uh, Berkshire Gas, our engineers. We took credit for uh, gas we are shedding. Uh, however, with the gas moratorium that's up this valley right now, uh, it's going to force us to go to dual fuel. So some of our rooftop units that we want to install are going to be propane, and then the rest of the building will be served by natural gas. So okay. we're looking to do uh, 6,000 gallons of propane. It's going to be um, three or four tanks on the southeast corner of the building. Uh, I've got a little... Oh, great. That's what I was looking oh, for. Oh, yeah, because we, we had this one. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this square a box. A little bit better. So this this is actually, if you hold it, this way around. Be, oh, okay. Um, Elm oh, Street out gotcha. here, North yep. Street over there. So. Okay, thank you. So there's a little, it's a fenced-in area right now, so it provides some uh, protection. So that's the, the corner we're going to put it in. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll put some screening around it. We'll put uh, bollards to protect it. It will be on a... A concrete pad okay. so we're uh, in the process right now of working with Osterman just to uh, make sure uh, the pad is the correct size right now that's just for just for display purposes a pad could be a little bit bigger I think when they're showing it there they're not giving it enough uh, distances between the tanks gotcha. so uh, Osterman's already been in touch with the South Deerfield Fire District and Deputy Chief Dennis Patterson to review the plan so okay and then he'll offer comments as well it, it looks like there's um, no problem with um, any water there, right? No, that's, so, yeah, that's okay. totally dry so over on that side. Paranoid of floating tanks. <laughs> you, uh, just before we get going a little further, I, I should probably read the public hearing notice just to make sure we're, yeah. we're all in compliance here. Uh, so Deerfield Select Board Notice of Public Hearing, Mass General Law, Chapter 148, Section 13. Um, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing to consider an application for a license pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 148, Section 13, made by Yankee Candle Company to store 6,000 gallons of LP gas on property located at 5 North Street, Assessor's Map 168, Lot 109 in South Deerfield. The hearing will be held on May 28, uh, 2019 at 6.45 p.m. in the main meeting room of the town, of Deer, uh, town Hall, located at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. A copy of the license application is available for inspection weekdays at the Office of Select Board. Um, and I, I know that all the, I read through the file and all the um, notices went out to abutters and, and all of that, so it seems to be all straightforward. Um, just looking at the diagram, does it, there'll be horizontal tanks, maybe three wide, two high, is that the idea? or? Well, no, no height, just three, three large tanks. Oh, three large, okay, I was under, I was thinking it was gonna be six actual tanks. No, I think there are three tanks, 2,000 To be each. determined by Osterman. Gotcha. So whatever works be best with that, that corner right there. Yep, yep, so. perfect. Okay. Um, and we'd rather have the natural gas. Oh, it's unfortunate we've got, got this it. moratorium up in this area. 
uh, for a long know, time. We're, we're living with it. So. Yep. Yep. And uh, from what I can tell, they're not going to, um, they have no plan to do anything with it. Yep. It's crazy. Mm. It's stifling economic growth for sure. Yeah. Um, any other questions from the board? No. Well, it's just on the moratorium. You know, part of the reason they wanted the pipeline was for gas for the other, other end of the state. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a moratorium. Yeah. We right. do. Right. So. Feels like payback. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any anybody uh, in the audience? Any public comment on this issue? Yeah, what, what, where did you say being located? Oh, uh, just uh, if you if you would just if you could just state your name just so the public okay, can hear you. Solo, yep. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Stop. You just. Yep. Bill, I'm sorry. In the uh, the southeast corner. Because what it does is well, I, and maybe they ain't going to bother my property because in essence, what you've done is bring in a hazard that creates an exposure to my property if it's, if it's in another location, which then could result in my fire insurance going up because now I have no exposure and all of a sudden now I have a serious exposure. Yeah, it's totally on the opposite, on the south side of the building, not even on the north side. Yeah, I live on the north side. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. You live okay. over on the yeah. So you're, you're, but you're on, you said the southeast? Yep, correct. Okay. Yep. yep. I don't know where that is in relation to my property. Okay, I don't know where that is in relation to my property. So basically, their building's going to be an insulator to you. What? Their building will be an insulator to you. So, so you this can't is, see anything. <laughs> yeah, it probably will be. This yeah. is North Street. Yeah. This is Elm Street over here. Yeah. So the tanks are going to be down here in your way. My over property's here. over here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it would go down past me. Yep. Right. Okay. See, that, that was one of the questions I had. Okay. You can keep and that, Bill, if you what? want. You can keep that. Okay, yeah. Want. And the other thing, the thing is, I, I was involved in fire protection for 39 years. I worked for the two largest fire insurance companies in this country. And as I say, propane is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering, is this whole installation... Is it being addressed with the fire codes? Yes. yes. Okay. Of so, course. And, yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's good. That's good to know. And secondly is, who, who will, once it's done and installed and ready to go, who will inspect it to see that it complies with the fire codes? Uh, the deputy, it'll go through the South Deerfield Fire District and Deputy Chief Dennis Patterson will be over to inspect it. Okay. I, I don't know. I, Yeah, I, I got other questions with that, but I, I won't say it. But uh, you can always stop over and see. Yeah, I know, see, Dennis. Yeah. I know, but it's, it's you know that's a specialized field, and I just wonder off the top of my head is how well are they versed in this type of installation? They, uh, they, I'm the fire chief in town as well, so I've got to separate myself from that. That's why the whole permitting goes through through Dennis. So. I, I can attest that they go to trainings. Oh, so, yeah. Well, that's so, training. Yeah, yeah, they go to the training. And any questions that they have, they've got um, the state fire marshal's mm -hmm. office, uh, yeah, John okay. Wood, who's a compliance officer. Well, that's good. We that's good to know. A, yeah. a, a multiple of times at yeah. different industries throughout yeah, the... See, that kind of answers the question. Good. But see, you don't see that in just in the application. Correct. And I just wanted to... Be, and you know, Osterman, for my own Osterman's, peace of mind. They're, they're certified, that, too. What? They're, they're certified as well. Os yeah. Osterman's. Yeah. Let's do it. Because I got a book here, probably 60 years old, that tells you how to protect them. Uh huh. And I don't think it, it could have changed. It's changed, but if the change, if there are any changes, it would have been upgraded as opposed to downgraded. Correct. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, so these these things would still apply. They talk about locations, uh, distances, everything. exposures, exposures, uh, yep. just well, right. Well, you're going to see your one thing you've done. You've addressed is you're going to put it on a concrete pad, so that takes care of the wild growth and creating mm -hmm. a fire. Which I, I don't know if you ever seen. There's a couple films out there that show those things exploding. Did you ever see them? Oh, we just had a call uh, the other day that it was for a possible structure fire with propane tanks. And no, but I mean, did you ever see the film? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one that where they project, they take off like a rocket. Oh, yeah, they were. And they go for a long distance, and it's like a, a rocket, and then when it hits something I did, and it explodes. Yeah. And so if your house or your structure was there, <laughs> it's goodbye. Yeah. But like I said, I was involved in this for, for 
39 years, so I got a pretty good background on it. Well, thank you and, for your comments. And, I, and I've been out of it for 20 years. <laughs> I retired 20 years ago. But no, no, that answered my question. I appreciate that. It's good. Great. It's good to know that. Thank you. It's being addressed because, you know, you don't know this without asking. Of course, and of I'm course. glad you're here to Absolutely. ask. Absolutely. That's and why and we I, have that's public hearings. Public yeah, that's, good. that's good to see that they yep. found it. Because I'll tell you, I, I see a lot of things that happened when I worked in it that or somebody didn't follow plans, or they, they said they did, and then you go out and check in, and they're not, they haven't addressed it. And then you have problems. Mm -hmm. That creates major problems. Yep. You know, well, I work with, I know, so well versed, there's some people in town that don't like me because of some of the enforcement <laughs> actions we've taken. So. Well, that's good, that's good yeah. to know. That's, that's a, I don't get paid to be liked. That's true. Well, pay to keep us well, safe. Yeah. Put it this way, I wasn't, well, <laughs> I hate to say my job, you wouldn't have wanted it. <laughs> okay, thank you, I appreciate your assistance. No problem Very good. good to hear that. Yeah. And any other public comment? Come on up and state your name and come on up to the, just so people can hear, uh, on, at, at home they want to hear. So thank you for coming up. My name is Jean Gramacki, I own the property at 22 Elm Street. Okay. And I guess I would be the closest building to this rocket yes. if it occurs. <laughs> You're I'd right. like to know what is the uh, setback from the from the property line for this uh, um, tank? You can hear. You can give her that one. As uh, I haven't seen, seen that. Dimension. Dimension. Yes. Yeah, it's, oh, it yes. I don't know if it does have a dimension. It doesn't show the setback. Yeah. She'll be familiar. Yeah. She knows where. It's. So this is. This is North Street out here. Yep. This is Elm Street over here. Mm -hmm. So the fenced in area where it's right there. Yeah, where the the, uh, the yard used to be for leader lumber. So the gates here and then the fence goes all the way out here. So it's going to be over here. Okay, so I'm right here. Yeah, you're probably. Right okay, right so here. how I'd like to know how far you are from my line. I had to guess you're going you're going at least a hundred yards, if not a little bit more. Yeah. Hundred yards. It's pretty far away. It's at least the length of the football field or so between. Yeah. Okay, that's 75 yeah. to 100. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. I wanted right. to know how safe we sure. are. Yeah. Sure. Just in case. Yeah. I know the fire department will make sure that that's safe for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming in. Yes. Uh, if there's no other comments, I'll, I'll close the hearing. You take a motion to close the hearing? I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to approve the license for Yankee Candles propane tanks. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Bill. Appreciate it. And thank you for bringing in more um, descriptive property. And then I'll do. Oh wait, maybe there must be a place to sign later. I'll do that. Yeah, thank you. Um, can can we put off the minutes until the end of the meeting? Just because. Sure. I have, yeah, there's quite a bit I, of minutes. I, I, I have truthfully, I haven't gone through them. Okay. Yeah, we can wait till the end of the meeting. Sure. Okay. I don't um, know how many minutes are there? There's, one, there's quite two, a few. I mean, we've had these. Already Six, a couple seven, of times. Eight, yeah, thirteen. I, yeah, I, I know. I, yep, I but just that's fine. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, um, there's just a couple I want to reread. So maybe we'll we'll hit the discussion items. Sure. Um, so the first item we have tonight is the accept the resignation of ZBA member Chris Bichette, effective June thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. And Chris has served um, the board off off and on, and I think he just. Stepping yeah. down for other reasons. Yeah, he, just, and he does not want to be reappointed. We're they very have grateful a, um, for his service. Yeah, they have a new business and it's um, taking, taking up, up a lot of time. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, do we need to take any vote on that? Um, yes, I make a motion. We accept with regret um, Chris's re resignation. I second it. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, second item is ZBA related. It's a ZBA request for comments. Um, this is Charles uh, Bado. It's a second application. Um, and this, the ZBA board is looking for comments from the select board and has already seek comments from other boards about a, um, an addition that is wanting to be applied, uh, added to a, to a building. And I think the ZBA 
uh, or the request is to, the setback is 10 feet, and they're looking to reduce it down to three feet. Um, uh, it says relief from sideline setback of 10 feet to three feet on pre-existing grandfathered lot. Um, I looked at the comments from the building commissioner, and which kind of stood out to me a little bit. Well, my concern, it's a, it's a non-conforming lot and you're making it more non-conforming. Correct. Uh, building, this is a comment from the building commissioner. Um, RA zone requires a 200 foot frontage, 60,000 square foot lot is non-conforming, does not meet the requirements for a variance, uh, self-created hardship, um, board should proceed with caution. So um, I looked at the other, police chief had no concerns and health inspector had no concerns, but um, it seems like it, um, it, it's encroaching quite a bit on that person's lot. And I guess, I think you would need a hardship, right? Yeah. As far as I'm understanding. And uh, I don't think there is one. But, you know, obviously the planning board will be looking at this, right? Or this? Uh, no, ZBA. The ZBA, 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 ZBA will be looking yeah. at this. So. I, I guess, I, I mean, I just would like to put in that it's already a non-conforming lot that becomes more non-conforming, non-conforming. And so I'm really not excited about having it happen. Mm -hmm. but so be a, they, um, they, they will listen to the whole story and why it's important this person wants to expand their house. So, but it, it just seems like Three feet is such a small setback. It, yeah, looking at the, the plot, it's already tight to the neighbors, and then it gets even farther, even yeah. closer. Um, let's see if I, can find one. I guess we don't have a blank sheet here. Are we? Are you yes, you do. It's oh, right. here it is. Yep, yeah, right there. You. Yep. Um, so um, I would take a, you know, do you want me to write down something here? Well, I, I would just be concerned that a non-conforming lot becomes more non-conforming non for um, not critical hardship reasons. I mean, you want to expand your house, you want to expand your house, but your lot is, you know, already too small. So... That to me is not a real reason, you know. Yeah, and we'd be creating a precedent that you're allowing this, you know, uh, oh. with, with no hardship. I know, know, within three feet. Right. Because what that does is it backs up that building right up to the other person's property. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? They no, it's it. just, you know, looking at it, the, you know, obviously I have reservations because of, one, it's a non-conforming lot to start with, mm -hmm. two, that you are encroaching on the other, yeah. and, you know. Um, the two of the bigger plan if you want to take a peek at where they So, I think he's putting an addition on here, I guess it goes sideways, the dwelling off a shared drive, and it, it gets the additions in the back. Of the so I think that kind of at an angle. It brings it right within two feet. It seems like the other side of the house they wouldn't have a problem with, but I'm sure it doesn't fit with the design. But. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I think this is the second time they've come through, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, without a true hardship, you know, I, I would have trouble My. granting the, the variance on that. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean that's, it's, that's uh, what I feel. It's it's, it's already non-conforming, right? So we're making it more non-conforming. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. It just seems on the other side of the house it's more 
Granted, we, you know. But the purpose of the addition is or anything, but still. No, I think it's bedrooms. Uh, I know. Yep, that's just right. Okay. Um, was there any feedback from the adjacent property? Excuse me? Yep. Was there any feedback from the adjacent property? Uh, not that I saw in the file, but, but I believe the last time through there was, if I remember the watching hearing. the CBA. Yeah. That may occur at the hearing. Yeah, the hearing that might, might have some of that. Uh, let's see, so moving along, uh, three one-day wine and malt licenses for Yankee Candle Village for June 15th, 16th, and 22nd. Um, that. You were mentioning that was a... Uh, oh, no, that was a different one. Um, this was the Yankee Candle one? No, the beer guy one was, yes. Yeah, but, it, um, right. The that's, Yankee Candle was a blueberry thing, I think. Yeah. Do we have those? Uh, uh, they're not in my packet, oh, so. They're not, they should be in your packet. I got the pig roast. Okay. Yeah, I have them right here, but I thought I also had put them in your packets. I, ha I have them. Here, it should be right behind Oh, them. okay. Yeah, I don't. Here's the, um, here's the one from the pig roast. Okay. Yep, I got that. That's here. And this is the blue. This is the Coleman sale. Oh, you do. Okay. Oh, you do yeah, have the blueberry fest. Okay, the blue okay, the blueberry fest is the twenty second. Here it is. Okay, so they have the Coleman sale on Saturday, June fifteenth, and Sunday, June sixteenth. So, uh, motion for that. Um, I make that motion. I'll we'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, then you want one for the 22nd for the Blueberry Fest, right? Yes. I make that motion. Okay. For what? For the Blueberry Festival on G Saturday, June, uh, June 22nd. 22nd. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, then we have oh the beer guy one. Yep. Uh, LLC. Right. At, that was for, that was um, for Yankees. Yankees barbecue. Yeah. Uh, um, on June second, I make a motion to do that. Our signatures. Okay. And then um, and then could have a second on that for the beer I'll guy. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. Just oh, any discussion, any discussion uh, please? Do we know how many of these they've had so far? I believe they've only had one. Had one you one. are allowed to have, I believe, 30 a year. If I recall, is that right? Or one? I don't, I don't think there's anybody that No, wait a minute. Is, it, we, is we my thinking that? Too. No. They get close to the... How many one... You're allowed a certain amount of one days right. a year, David. Yeah, I can't remember. Right I'm thinking... I, th I feel like it is 30, but I that number right seems high when I say it out loud, but I, I think that is... 20, but there's yeah, there is, there is some number you're allowed. So I, I they, they're think, only at two, yeah. I think. I don't think that we're, we've got anyone that's even close. No, yeah. no, no. Even all our Yankee Candle events don't, don't yeah. Yeah. surpass that number. And then I think I would just keep an open mind as to... Uh, you know, noise. I know they have a band and stuff, and it sounds like a, a good time, but just to kind of keep aware if you, if people are hearing complaints, um, mm -hmm. yeah. we might want to address it in the f future, but I think the last one went off without a hitch. Everybody was had a good time. And yeah. yeah, and he, has, he should, okay. has his tips. He has his tips training. Great. Tips training. Yep. Okay. So I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think I had your copies of your stuff here because I oh, have extra okay. copies. Yep. That was the only one I had to sign the Yep. Oh, I didn't sign the bottom. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. I think I had your stuff somehow because I have two copies of these. Oh, yes, they're on the bottom as well. Uh, 
So let me get rid of some of this paperwork. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had all your stuff. Oh, yeah, I got mixed up in mine. Do you want it? You know what? Yeah, you want I'll put it? it in my book. Okay. All right, just a second then. Did you have the Z you had the ZBA stuff, right? So oh, okay. Let me give you the ZBA stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the ZBA stuff. Oh, that's right. Um, so there was a uh, next item was a request letter of support for the 350th anniversary celebration postmark um, and this was I think a request that we we're um, in discussion with the postmaster about doing a postmark do you want to well what it is um, Robin Driscoll the post um, master up in Old Deerfield, um, suggested that we could um, put in for a, a special stamp for the year of the 350th so that we get the cancellation that says Deerfield 350th on it. And it's, yeah. you know, it's kind of cool. It's so, nice. Mm. Yeah. So um, we just need a letter of support saying that the select board does in fact support um, this activity and um, we'll work with Robin and make sure that it happens for Old Deerfield Post Office zip code and the South Deerfield Post Office zip code. They are getting a new postmaster, so Robin will work with the new po whoever the new postmaster okay. is. Great. So I make a motion that we support um, this um, wonderful idea and that we send a letter of support um, to Robin to let her know to go ahead and start working on this. Okay. It has to, it has to go through official you know, obviously the post service, post sure. service official requests. But apparently we will have a special cancellation for the year 2023. That'll be great. Yeah, it's yeah. really exciting. And um, I guess I can second that, right? Any second. Yeah. Second. Um, any other discussion? Yeah. Um, do we get to approve the final design? That's a good question. Um, actually, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I think... Yes, I would think so. I would think so too. I mean, and they I wondered if it was like our town seal or something like that, because it looks like they were using the examples that you were yeah. like yeah. official looking things. So, yep. But yes. Yeah. So we'll have to talk about that a little yeah. further. Okay. okay. Um, we look forward. We can say we look forward to working with her on this. Yeah. Or okay. Something along those lines. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. I'll follow up on that because I don't really know. I mean, I haven't talked to her. So yep. I'll go ch chase her down and find out what, what the approval process is. There's also, um, next item would be a request um, approval of the 350th anniversary celebration logo, um, which, you know, I had a few comments on that I Actually, to Trevor, I thought you had a really good idea of um, you know having the watermark 350 because I mean you you do 1673 to 2023 it doesn't most of the fifth graders get that yeah me on the other hand <laughs> so, um, so, I, <laughs> so I think having a watermark 350 behind there is actually well there was idea. you know and um, a local graphic designer designed this and I, I think it's great and I just wanted to um, I guess have a broader discussion of what we want to do with this um, with this logo. I I would um, I was thinking that you know 350 should be embodied in there somehow, um, just so it, it's extremely clear right off the bat. You don't have to do the math. You know what it's all about, um, and it can be a light watermark or something like that that just has that there. So you're you're prominently Deerfield 1673 to 2023. Um, but it's pretty easy for people to understand that's a 350th celebration. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, I've looked on the web at others and, you know, some have a lot more elaborate stuff. And I know someone had a 
small little sentence of celebrating three centuries for their 300th. Um, we may not you know, need to do anything like that, but I think just adding that 350 somehow um, would be interesting. The other discussion that I've heard um, was, was talking about um, was talking about tapping into the, the artists in the community and do we want to just move along with this really quickly right now and just approve something fast or would we want to look at something long, you know, a little, take a little bit longer to do this and tap the artists in the, in the community, use it as a fundraising thing, let people put submissions in and, and everybody, um, we have a wine and cheese gala, a fundraising gala kind of thing for it and people can pick their one they like the most. Um, we could auction off the original artwork for it, that kind of thing. These were ideas that had come from others in the community, and I don't know what anyone's thoughts are on that. I don't, you know, I don't want to step on what the committee's been doing already. You know, I'm, the um, it's great to have my you. interpretation of the basic logo, uh, and I agree with the watermark behind the 350, is that this logo is going to be something that is going to be that every committee that is associated with the uh, uh, 350th will be using and then they'll do the artwork around it. Gotcha. And so it's just making sure that we have one format that everybody will be using. Yeah. And then they can, you know, and the artists for different things could be decorating around it for different things. For different things, I see and, what you mean. But so it'll be a just living. making sure it's like a, a copyrighted thing that this is, and everybody that's associated with will be using this one official logo. It, yeah, it's not it's not by itself totally. It's so like if you're doing a 5K race, this would, would be part of that logo. Outline of Deerfield with Deerfield, or you could just use Deerfield the, you know, 1673 to 2023, and then you have a bunch of little runners in the bottom. Or mm -hmm. if you were doing something with Pecumptic or Sugarloaf, you could do some hills and. Mm -hmm. you know, have Deerfield above. The idea is to have the Deerfield these look exactly the same. On everywhere. everyone. Yeah. So the... And then people could build on the, that for the, their each individual yeah. event. And it wasn't yeah. even the border of the... Of the town. Of the town. They eliminated that even too. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think it's not worth rushing into. I, I, we could have more discussion and maybe we can have the committee come and... Talk about to, their ideas and went well. Yeah. They got to here. Yeah, and put them on the you know another agenda, mm -hmm. um, just so that everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. I think I think there was good discussion. Yeah. Um, and it was been very thoughtful for several months of discussion. Yeah. So, um, but I kind of like the 350 idea, the watermark 350. So, um, because you can want people to remember it's the 350th. Right. Right and I just, you know, Sunderland's, Sunderland's logo with that, their tree and celebrating th mm -hmm. th three centuries or whatever yeah, it was, three, three, centuries. three centuries of community. Oh my gosh, that was just was such a nice. fabulous, fabulous logo. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, there's just a lot of things that we could still do, I think, that, would, that yeah. would maybe someone would be really creative and give yeah. us a, something of that caliber. Right. Maybe, but I do think the Deerfield having that Deerfield somewhere mm -hmm. and have it look the same all the time is is important. Yeah. So we were there partly. Yeah. Any public comment? Yeah, I mean exactly what you said, Dave. It was exactly the concept: is get the core Deerfield um, with the information, and if you want to do the watermark behind it, it's fine. It doesn't deviate much from that right. strategy. Yep. Um, because you don't want to over design the logo in terms of feeding in what Carolyn was saying about you these can't other really things. Anything else you become a digital nightmare to, to merge these yeah. things together. Mm -hmm. um, so so maybe the iteration is to go back to the watermark and get something moving because we're talking about fundraising, we're mm -hmm. talking about mailers already and you know if another two, three months go by, you know, all, all of a sudden you lost the summer. Yep. This could be a temper, you know, this could be a stopgap thing for yeah, now, too. Yeah, it doesn't have to be permanent, either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't know what you want to do. do well, I'd like to figure out how to get, a, get the 350 watermark on that, and then just see what that looks like. And maybe, okay. I don't know, oh, yeah. talk about well, that with the committee? Yeah, 
um, our next meeting is um, June 24th, so. Okay. Um, well, I'll be sure to bring it up. And we need more participation in that board, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. People, well, people are getting excited, so they're wanting to be on subcommittees and mm -hmm. stuff, and I think that's wonderful. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you still need a steering committee that's going to be like the core overseer group. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more comment. Sure. Oh, yes. Just Please. The, the only reason for having the 2073 is because it's in the future and you want people, I mean, most people can do the math. <laughs> but the, I, I think you have it. The 1673, 1673 to, 16, to 2023? No, I mean, the only reason to have it. If you have 350 and you got 1673, the only reason to have 2023 20, is to whatever, whatever they call it, make a date or save the date. Is that the only reason? Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of thinking about doing that leading up to that. Yeah. From these guys. Yeah, sometimes that's good. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to, uh, you know, we want to have a whole year's worth of activities. So the, it's very important to have, and, 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 to, to reach out to as many groups as possible in town. And so um, that requires quite a lot of fundraising. So um, we have a fantastic fundraising person and, um, and, and so we're really excited. I mean, we have a lot of potential and we're planning early enough that it, shouldn't, it should be really enjoyable rather than rushed and stressed out, you know, everyone being stressed out. So I'm hoping this will be really exciting. Mm. Okay, um, so moving along is uh, accept and sign the third party inspection report and corrective action form for the landfill. Um, so this is a uh, continuation of the work I think we're doing at the landfill for the, um, generally we have people come in and evaluate the condition of the landfill, DEP looks at it and says, you know, finds corrective action that needs to take place. There was um, several items listed in that report. One was um, a tree that was in this kind of one of the corners, back corners of that that was kind of laying down for a bit of time. Um, I spoke with Kevin, that's been cleaned up and is gone. Um, the other action was a vent pipe had been uh, knocked over or, or broken off or something, maybe from mowing or an equipment or something. And they actually evaluated all of them and Kevin found a couple additional. And so they've repaired all of those. So that's been corrected. The last item um, that's there are, there's a couple of uh, indents from the landfill as it settles. The, there's a membrane and then kind of topsoil on top of that with you know, vegetation growth on that. And that's kind of dipping it a little bit. So it collects a bit of water and DEP wants that repaired. Um, there's been quite a bit of work done to try and engineer how that's going to take place with the equipment that could be used because you can't use a lot of heavy equipment on that landfill. You create more problems. So, um, so from my understanding, a lot of this has been addressed. Uh, Kevin has gotten a hold of the CAD drawings that were done for that um, repair work and as we're working to secure another engineering firm. I think the one that we had hoped to work with and had the contract is um, either MIA or moved, moved along somehow or another. Um, so Kevin's been working hard through that and um, we should have more informa information from him shortly. We, we're also hoping maybe that work would be tied into a um, larger project of putting solar on, on a landfill. but. Um, that project process seems to be taking, you know, as everything, longer than we hoped, and we cannot prolong fixing the divots any longer. So we just need know. to go ahead and do that, regardless of what happens on that landfill. So, in speaking with Kevin today, that that ball is all moving forward, and I I just like to go ahead and sign the um, sign the you know the report. Um, I make a motion. We sign the report. Uh, and thanks, and thanks to Kevin for um, following up on all the corrective action. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Any public comment? Um, so all those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Do you have a copy to sign? Those two right now for you.
there's a couple things to fill out still, like the date stuff. Yep. That you, okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, Thank you for that. Now, uh, next item is to accept a um, Massachusetts uh, DCR Urban and Community Forestry Challenge Grant for $4,800. Um, I wanted to have a little discussion about this grant. Um, it's always great to get grants, and I think this is to kind of replace some of the missing trees that we have and or trees that are just, you know, are not um, surviving in our climate change and are moving along to other hardier um, Part of your species. We've done a tree study, which is up on the wall there. We've done a lot of work around trees recently. I just wanted to kind of discuss this and make sure that the um, you know in kind contribution was not worth more than five hundred, you know, forty eight hundred bucks. I just want, you know, sometimes you can be excited about getting a grant. You realize you end up having to do a whole lot more work than the four thousand eight hundred dollars is worth. So. I think this is worth doing, uh, but I just wanted to kind of have a discussion of that. And if, maybe if I'm not sh not sure where this grant came from, I think Wendy had applied for it. Yeah, it may Wendy have been did. something that was requested by somebody at some point. I'm not sure how how yeah. it all went down, but I, maybe might I believe it was it. Wendy did apply for it in conjunction with David Purrington, who's the environmental. Okay. He's the. Uh, uh, I can't remember his exact title, but he's an environmental steward that works with DA in Bement. Okay. And so they just, if you remember on Earth Day, they just had a tree planting yes. ceremony. So that was in anticipation of getting this grant and in right. hopes that they were going to be able to use this funding for that purpose. But they okay. knew that the timing of it wasn't connected. So they they did anticipate that they might, you know, go out and do that work ahead of time. But and they then, have a whole uh, inventory of trees that they've identified to replace with okay. this money. There's more right. trees than than the money will account for, but they have a whole right. inventory of, and they, and Kevin, yeah. I understand, has um, found a location to purchase the trees. Okay. I guess there had been some questions about whether they were going to be available, but we have yeah. secured a, a okay. location to get them, I understand. Um, so part of it was for educational outreach, and, edu and right. I was hoping that um, we, we could put like a little fact sheet out about what, you know, like don't, if you have an option or you have a choice of planting, maybe you could plant instead of maples, you could plant an oak or some some more resilient kind of tree, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of information for people. Yeah, that would be and great. And we could just put it on our website, mm -hmm. you know, um, and we could talk about it in a mm -hmm. meeting and then mm -hmm. have it on the website so people could refer to it as sort of our resilient, like, info page or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you That's a great idea. want a little bit more resilient tree belt, you want a resilient yard, this is what you can plant that will Tomorrow better work with, years. yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that will work with climate change better. Yeah, that's a great idea, that, yeah. Because part of the inventory plan and all that was that educational night that we had. And it was quite interesting, I have to say, I really learned a lot as to what species were gonna, gonna make it in the mm -hmm. next hundred years and mm -hmm. what we should be investing in tree canopy as as a community and you know unfortunately we just have an overwhelmingly number of maples that are just absolutely gorgeous in the fall yes. but they are they are dying yep. and you know we should be plant replacing them with like an oak or some of the other species of, of plants that were recommended so right. having that information okay. out there should be you know, would be really nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. That that's what I was hoping to hear, and I'm glad yeah. that sure. people are looking forward to that. Because of the dollar amount, I assume it's not. You know, it has to go out to bid. No. Correct. Right. And totally. we don't have to 4, use state-approved contractors. No. Okay, so we can do it reasonably. Yeah, my understanding is it's also it's just for the purchase of the actual trees and for the education, right. as Carolyn okay, right. said. There was an educational well, I, I was component. Just, you know, Once the state's involved with it, this would cost us twenty thousand dollars to spend five. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, no. Cool. Well, I, I was thinking, just you know, you were talking about this guy being um, coordinating everything. I mean, he should be able to go do a little fact sheet for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he's working with Kim, too. Kim McPhee part, was part okay. of that. I think okay. they did the tree inventory yep. project yes. through yep. the yes. COG. So she got included in the... Oh, good. Um, she, they both know what the grant, you know, what yeah. the... Uh, well, having a few... Work, perfect. Having a was. little bit of information on our website, I think, would be very helpful to people. Yep. Yep. That's great. Absolutely. Yep. So um, a motion to accept in the grant. Um, I make that motion. I'll we'll second it. Any other further discussion, comment from the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.
I'm going to you sign that, Trevor, and then I'm going to put you down as the author as signatory, and have you're going to have to get notarized in front of Barbara or okay, Priscilla or that. someone next time you're here. Uh, let's see. Let signature for the contractor. For the should I shine under the Commonwealth? Uh, no, just don't. No, on the you're on the other side, underneath oh. where. No, no, on the other side. I mean, no, not the Commonwealth. The other side. The. Well, that is the Commonwealth. No, the other. The yes, that side. Signature left side. authorized signature for the contractor. For the contractor, correct. You know what, I have two of these. I Thank think, you. I think I have oh, yeah, I think that. Yes, I don't think I have that. Okay, um, so moving along, uh, review and issue the 2019 sewer commitment um, number two. So um, I'll read this here. So this is the to the treasurer collector from, um, let's see, from May 21st, 2019, the utility billing 2019 commitment number two. You are hereby authorized to collect uh, from the 896 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names, amounting in the aggregate of $481,138.04 uh, uh, to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So this would be for $481,138.04. The sewer consumption, thirty-two thousand seven hundred no, no thirty-two yeah, 32 million. million. Sorry, <laughs> thirty-two million uh, seven hundred ninety thousand one hundred forty-two gallons. Um, I make a motion that we do this for four hundred eighty-one thousand one hundred thirty-eight dollars and four cents. No second. Any discussion? Public so. Comment? Um, this is, we're doing the second commitment, which is, so then the summer commitment, which we will approve in the fall, is capped at 125%. So this, that gives us over the million. Right. For our. Um, for the USDA. Yeah. And for okay. 1% of the. Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure we were over a million, but it looks like. If we if we take this 481 and do 125 percent, yeah, you're just over. You're just we come just to over a million. So okay, we're okay. All right. So I guess I got a second. I, we did the all all in favor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Yes. Go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and the uh, last item under discussion, decision items, is the appoint the building commissioner. Um, so this is going to take a little bit of a discussion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you want me to give a recap of where we are? Basically, Okay, yeah, sure. so we um, are in need of a, a building commissioner, and we've been, uh, uh, our current building commissioner, Dick Kalaszewski, has served us well for many, many years and is looking to slow down. <laughs> He's been working a ton. Um, so we, we have been hunting for a building commissioner for... Mm, Six months, at eight least. months, Six anyway. Eight months. It's we've been a long we've had two ads out at least. We've had two or three the ad ads out twice at and least. We've had two applicants. Yeah. So there's um, there actually is, we've only had one. We've actually only had one applicant, and then we sought solic out solicited. a second. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. We have two <laughs> applications. So we've been working hard to find somebody. Um, the issue is there's just not you know as it with many trades there's nobody. Not a lot of people coming up through the trades to do this kind of work any longer. Um, and those that do have the qualifications, which are immense and a, a huge responsibility, um, are demanding a good chunk of money for that, for that responsibility and that work and that training, that upkeep. Um, so the challenge has been to try and find somebody that can fit our budget and fit our needs. Um, and also, the hard part is fitting our compensation schedule. 
and our compensation plan. So the two that we have found so far um, just, you know, are asking way more than what fits into the kind of average, um, you know, typical our compensation schedule is you figure out what grade you're at and, you know, you start at a step one and in 10 years you're at step 10. Or we place them a little bit somewhere else on the line um, based on their experience. But even being generous with that, you're still woefully inadequate of what the market is asking. Um, so here we are. Um, so that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So basically what I've done is to try to, um, I, I'd like to make a recommendation to the board in uh, approaching the personnel board, I think, to relook at the position. So in 2010, you originally had a job description for the position, and in 2019, it was updated. Um, in that time, it went from a non-exempt to an exempt position. So I think that in itself is, is warrants a, a change of uh, a look at it in terms of change of grade. It's gone from supervising one part-time person, possibly to supervising at least two part-time people with inspectors and then a third um, staff person, administrative support person, which could be half to three-quarter time and maybe even full-time at some point. Um, I think uh, I looked at the, the comparison of the, the, the Franklin Regional Council towns just in Franklin County. Many of them are served by the Franklin um, Regional Council's program, so it's a little difficult to tell the fees, but there are three towns that are not and that are comparable to Deerfield. That's Greenfield, Montague, um, actually, De and Orange. Um, and all of those towns, including, um, all three of them are in around the mid-60s, with Orange being around 63, Greenfield almost 70, and, and Montague in the middle around 63. So right now, the way that your position is, you have a grade five position, um, which I think um, is relatively low. I think it should be reconsidered to a grade six. At a grade five, your starting rate is 24.35, and your top rate is 36.52. Your own building commissioner sat in the budget hearings and told you that he couldn't keep his part-time inspectors right. for less than $38 an hour. Right. So this you're already true. paying yeah. your part-time inspectors 38 and you're expecting an, an, a building commissioner to come in and supervise those people and making you know, $2 less an hour than, than at, at the top level, mm -hmm. at the top of what you could pay. But I thought we... Um, we have budgeted. We budgeted 65. We did budget. 65. But that doesn't get, yeah, six, so 65, I think, gets you to uh, close to the top of that range, as I said. So if you used your system of, you know, starting at step one, you're, you're not close. Right. If, you, if you say, well, we're going to go to step three, like we, we try to say mm -hmm. step three generally, you're closer, but you're not there. Um, if you go to grade six, you have a much better, you know, chance. Then you, then you can come in around where you should be. You should be right. around step three. If you put it at grade six, you're in, you're at that rate, you're at 3006. I think that's in the range. I think well, you can make a case based on those things that I said. I looked at your compensation um, tool. There's still some debate on which tool we've been using, but mm -hmm. it, it clearly could be uh, regraded. So I think, and either candidate, you're, you would have to do this. You'd have to consider this. And all, also, you just gave your building commissioner uh, you know, more money under the, uh, knowing that that was the case, that you felt the position deserved to be, yeah. you know, considered in that well, respect. Well, I'm 100% supportive. We, we've got to get a building commissioner in No here. doubt. So I'm 100% supportive of us offering this, what's budgeted, 65. And so okay. I think, I think I would love for you to draft that draft letter a memo to, uh, the to the personnel, personnel board. board discussing wh where we're at, where we've been and um, where we'd like to go in the future and just get some way in. We, we have to get this done. Okay. So well, one, of the one of the candidates will take the 65, right? We well, hope. we hope. We don't know. Yeah. Okay. We've got to get there. With, we yeah. got to be able to make an offer without, with it being like, legitimate. Well, you know, with, you, you, you stood it, you, you sat in your 
uh, town meeting and you and Trevor specifically made a very strong case about um, staying consistent with our compensation plan so if we can't do that we need to look at how we can change the plan we can't try to manipulate the right. people in the positions no I, I understand but right. it's also we're we have been looking for a long time yes and, we, and on purpose we budgeted the money yes right, so we, we need to yeah. move on this yes yep. um, okay and see if those candidates are one of them, one of them. will at least take the 65 and then we can worry about you know we need to get them committed to come mm -hmm. at at that 65 that we've budgeted and then we can figure out how to approach the personnel committee if then if no one's going to take 65 then we need to re advertise and we have to redo that mm -hmm. position yep. Well, I, I think I, we should redo the position anyway. Yes, I think we should do that immediately. Yes. So yeah. that, that yes. way, if as we go down that road, we have the ability okay. to stretch. So right. my understanding is then you will reach mm -hmm. out this week yes. to... Yes, exactly. Because okay. yes. I think right. they, I believe they meet maybe Monday. Usually yeah, the they first usually Monday have the a month. meeting the first, oh, okay. so first week. Oh, yeah. So if we can get well, this done this week, we address them I guess Monday and let them know what's going on. Oh, it's just, yeah. you know, fill in. to get <laughs> somebody that's competent. And that's the key. Yes. Right. Thirty dollars an hour isn't very much. I know. For this level, and it's you know. I know it's. You know. Um, I know. And, but because you know. Anybody that has worked with any tradespeople lately, know what they're charging. <laughs> oh yeah. And that means they're. Looking at something that where they want to slow their life down some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what. In theory, even though if you talk to Dick, he's far from slowing his life down. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff happening um, in town. But it's. Um, no, I agree. But I agree. you know, it's. I I think the personnel. We should look at the personnel board, and they should be at, at least a grade six. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we have to, to move on it. this, it's, um, and it, and it's wrongly classified. Well, we'll yeah, yeah. Well, right. I think we could address. Well, that I think based it, on the some of it now. back in the day. Was. was it hasn't kept up it hasn't I know kept up. but part of it was there was a also a fee schedule that was going along with it right. yes. so that augmented the the that's salary right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, which yes. that isn't there anymore that's correct that's right you so did per diem back then you paid yeah. and then you gave fees and yeah that's right. and you know because you know we still I because we had you know some of our inspectors were making seventy eighty thousand dollars a year right when you got fees and when stuff. the fees right. were involved with it that's right. so yeah. And you okay. are doing that. You are doing that. I still think in your your plumbing and why. Uh, but not our building. Yeah. Right, not your building and electrical. Those are on regular, I think, salary. But I think we the fixed other folks that. Are getting some. We made everything. Oh, you did everything across. Yeah. I thought yeah. the other ones were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, thank okay. you. Okay. Excellent. All, All right. right. So, so yeah, because good. you know, and just on, you know, you don't always want to go with the cheapest. You want to go with the most competent because mm -hmm. it affects what's happening in town. And how things are construction and how right. things are done. I agree. So yeah. Yeah, know, I think once we get to grade six, we'll be able to do yeah. exactly that. We'll be able to get where yeah. we need to go with the right. qualifications. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank so you. yeah, keep us in the loop on that this yep. week. I'll put it on next. I, I want to yep. keep it on every week because we just got to keep it going. So. Right. Thank you. Jeff, you have any comments on that? <laughs> Jeff Upton. No. Being finance board, you might. I thought you might have no comment. No comment at this time. Not yet. <laughs> no, you already you already <laughs> approved this. You're going to hire it at one grade and then look at upgrading it. No. 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 no we're we're going to try to hire upgrade. it. At, we're going to look at the grade we're now. Gonna correct it we first hire. and then correct. hire. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 already approved them. I mean, we got the money. We have a budget, but we need to match the classification plan to yeah. to the budget before we make but a budget Comes in at what thirty one twenty five. Hour? Yeah, it's about that. Probably that. Yeah, it sounds about, about right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Actually, there's more hours this year, Chris. In in 20, there's 2096, I think. Okay. Yeah. Or 2080. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Just, that's a side. Sorry. Yes, please. Yeah, I, I know Dick said he was going part time. Is he getting compensated for the time he's yes. putting in? Yes, he has been. He has been. We yes. we we. Uh, we give him a stipend. Okay. Uh, just and we, we been, can give him another stipend for just, I know after January. He said he was going to be working 20 hours a week, and, and he's quite often it's easier when I'm here. Yeah. And it's just right. So. I know. 
He's been putting a lot okay. more hours. So um, under new business, um, there was a, a request by a member to, to discuss uh, the town administrator search, and maybe we could talk about the assistant town administrator search as well. But I can give a quick update on the, um, the town administrator search that we um, applications closed on the 20th. Um, we have uh, started to compile those applications, and um, I have a meeting tomorrow with the um, uh, Satu Zoller, who's, who's heading up that search for us. And um, I would like to maybe formally, uh, you know, uh, get approval for the search committee that it, we've kind of had laid out there informally. Um, and so I'll, I'll list off the names: um, Tom Scanlon, uh, and uh, who, who's, who's a resident of town, town, town. Um, Oh, well, not, I mean, not accountant, yes. auditor. Auditor, thank you. Yes, sorry. Uh, Brenda Hill, who is our town Good accountant. Town. Uh, John Paturk, our chief of police. Um, I'm on the board, uh, Trevor McDaniel, and Satu Zoller is also uh, heading up that search. Um, anybody else want to add to that or okay I with that? I think, you know. I'm okay so with the that. So pl the plan uh, is to, I was going to meet with Satu uh, tomorrow, um, kind of compile what's out of the list that we have, who could we interview? Um, and then uh, constitute the search committee together for a meeting, uh, go through those, see who would want to interview, start setting up that process. So that we move this along as quickly as we can. I assume the applications are more numerous than for the building commissioner? Yes, yes. Thankfully. Thankfully. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, and then for the um, assistant town administrator, do, yes. do you want to fill on that? Well, I mean, well we, so the assistant town administrator, we did, I, I think I mentioned previously, we, we had great candidates. Um, we had four, uh, four finalists, I guess, that we interviewed. Um, two finalists came out of those, and I checked references for those two, and they came out outstanding. Um, the similar situation happened. I went to right. uh, do an offer for the first choice candidate, and he wanted a little bit more than was available in the grade and step. Um, so once again, um, so I, I went back to, you know, look at his qualifications. The grade, I think, is fine, is completely adequate. It's really the step, and can we, you know, stretch the step? Um, so I did ask Trevor today, similar to what Carolyn had said, the money's, the, there's money in the budget for a step four position, I believe, and we were offering him a step three, and I wondered if it would be possible to stretch to a step four, um, you know, to make this offer. I'm not sure he would even accept that. That right. puts it at around. 50 I think it's about 56 which or 56 is the budget we have um, what I was offering was like 50,000 a little over 50,000 and frankly then I discovered subsequently I didn't even recognize that the administrative assistant in your office makes that much because of longevity which right, so you know is reasonable, reasonable because that she's been in. here for 13 yeah. 14 years um, but it makes it again a little bit um, you know just just makes the hierarchy a little flatter um, when you're expecting somebody to supervise somebody that's making you know same money the same money so so I think going if I could go to 56 um, so I have reached back out to the first um, to the first choice candidate to ask if that um, if that would be a um, possibility, and then I'll let you know. But and, and that's going to be stretching up to a step four, which again we'd have to inform the personnel board. Mm -hmm. But there's justification that there's eight years of experience yeah, collectively of experience. in towns comparable to the town. I think there's mm -hmm. a good you know reason. But I think you know I did want to start lower because I think that you know I think there is room to, for this position to grow. So you know I don't want to get get right. too high up there. But so if the first choice doesn't, then I think the second choice will likely take mm -hmm. at least the budgeted amount. So. They were both um, I definitely think we'll have a good a good candidate um, mm -hmm. good shortly. Yes. So, so we, we need to that. get more yeah. organized. Good. The interviews were very good. Yeah. So thank you very much for yep. that and your patience. Um, any. Uh, oh, I, I just. Else? Yeah. Um, at Homeland Security meeting um, this past week, uh, we voted to um, a forty thousand dollars for um, cybersecurity regionalization project. And um, this is, was granted to the FERCOG for Deerfield and a few other towns. And what they're going to do is come in and um, review the inventory and assessment that we had just done mm -hmm. um, and, and value that. Um, 
remember about a year ago, I had been talking about with the state police, they were having this pilot program and I had volunteered Deerfield to be part of it because I felt it was really important that we had some standards or mm -hmm. something. And so they were trying to develop standards. It turned out that Charlie Baker did not um, budget, support that in the budget. So, um, but this other group developed statewide between the uh, Mass Massachusetts IT group at the state level and the state police and Homeland Security and because there's all kinds of ransom there was a lot problem, of ransom the you know with the and especially in the hospitals you know like mm -hmm. North Adams and right down here in Long Meadow and stuff so there was just a lot of issues so anyway um, so they're going to do the assessment see what we have look at what we do, have done um, and then the second part of it is that they will actually give us, which Jeff, you will appreciate, um, a 10-year uh, plan to what we have to do to maintain our security and what kind of infra you know, hard you know, computer Hardware. stuff that we have to buy. And, um, so that, and, and it will meet the standards that are coming out of this work group, statewide work group. Um, that we're working on in Homeland Security. I'm actually not on that committee um, because I have nothing to add to the committee but just glazed over look. So, um, You're but, still with your highlighter? And your yeah, paper. yeah, I'm like highlighting every <laughs> single sentence. But um, anyway, it's, it's really good. It will look at the operating system, the software, you know, the type of stuff that we have, um, how, you know, how we access the internet. Um, what kind of antivirus firewalls, you know, backup systems, all that. But then they will go in and give us a 10-year plan, which I think is going to be hugely valuable. And we'll, and we'll, you know, I'll present it to the um, capital. We can talk about it, mm -hmm. and then hopefully, you know, integrate it into our capital plan for next year. And Diana, how do you see it? Because you were heavily involved with the IT here. This mm -hmm. dovetails well with that. Yes, I think it's it's going toward, you know, we just did actually our own sort of internal assessment that's Correct. similar to this to try to be more cohesive internally. And I think this is just adding, adding on to that, that, you know, regionally for all the towns to right. be, you know, to have some cohesiveness, which I think, as Carolyn said, has been talked about for at least a decade, you know, around IT. Well, you know what it is, is just trying to get some kind of standards, statewide right. standards, and it's just... You know, it's getting to the point where it's crazy. What we it, need to do that. It's wild west out yeah. there, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And, and every time you talk to somebody, it's a little bit different. So right. this is to give us a better value or, or give us an idea of what we should be striving for. Right, That'd and I great. think I think both of us have been at trainings this past year where you know one of the big f forms of um, of disaster I don't know what's called a disaster, but our concerns is cybersecurity. You know, around right. yeah, cybersecurity exactly. is um, like a big. Thing. I am um, on my planning committee at the Homeland Security subcommittee. We have a cybersecurity project that is moving forward that will, you know, it will be a tr big training, all day long training that, you know, we're we putting right. together. But yeah. again, I, you know, I listen to it and I say, is this practical? And that's my, really my mm -hmm. input to it. But um, so that's moving okay. along. Okay, that's we, great. We, that was, so that will be another $50,000. So when, about, when do you think this will? Well, this, this, this we voted, just voted it. We, we just voted, so it goes to EOPS, and that takes about three weeks, and they okay. they approve it, and then the money's available because this is FY19 money, so oh, we okay, can spend good. it right away. Great. And this, I said we we're very interested, so this yep. will kick us up to the front. So I, I would imagine it will start in, within a month or so. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other? Uh, so, um, any other new business? Um, any, who's got a uh, town administrator's report? Do you want to do any project updates or hit on anything, Diane? <clears throat> sure. Well, this week, um, we uh, scheduled the Complete Streets, our internal kickoff meeting with public safety folks. Um, it's going to be in the second week of June, and okay. then we'll be doing more of our public outreach once we get that started. Right. Um, we, uh, let's see. That's the, on the, that's on the um, the tenth at Monday morning at nine. Okay, yeah. here, right here. Yeah, okay. here. Yeah. It'll be great to get that moving, and I'm really excited to keep, you know, get the public part of that going and start to address our yeah. needs. Yeah. 
Um, so the secondary clarifier project contract has been signed and a notice to proceed has been given on that. So um, we are, we got an update from Dave Prickett today on our USDA application. We had um, a few uh, administrative issues. We were clearing with SAM registration. Uh, we had a habitat. We discovered a habitat when we did our wildlife assessment, our national heritage assessment. And there was one other small administrative issue that's now been put to bed. So right. all of that is done and we're waiting um, hopefully any minute to hear what our hopefully what we get. <laughs> what gonna, we might, what we might expect. Between and, the time that we need to vote on this debt oh. exclusion and yeah, what we hear closer. from them. It's, yeah. Yes, it is. It's going to be down Welcome to the to wire. Municipal government. <laughs> <laughs> but he did feel that we would have something within a couple weeks, yep. you know, so that before the 24th, we'd have time yep. to hope. talk and assess. Yes, we'd love to. If, the, we, if we can get some information the from them, we would do a public outreach, you know, with Dave, say, this is what we got, this is where we're going. You know, okay, we only got this. What do we do first? You know, is it, you know, do we tackle this larger project or do we just scale it back and do something here first? So I think that really, it really depends on what, what the USDA comes across with. And then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there okay. and see what process we're going to lay out for all that. You know, how we'll chop it up and how yep. we'll tackle it. And that we need to finish up because we are. Can we, we dedicate a whole meeting to that? As that's it. For yes. us to have a discussion. Yes. Yeah. Um, you need to be, everybody's yeah. got to be on yeah. you know, top of the game. Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say one thing that's pending is the final language in the consent order. And that mm -hmm. has to be put in with deadlines. So we want, you know, we're sort of waiting. It's all sort of all connected. Hopefully once it's all, it's all going to come together and go click, click, click. Did you, did you tell? It. And then um, everything's going to happen. Yeah, but um, you're you're keeping um, DEP informed, right? Yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. They, they are yeah, waiting. I, I they don't. Great working with yes. us on that. So okay. they yeah, recognize great. we're waiting for USDA, and they want to make sure that they those things they can be that. come together appropriately. Okay, so they're right. they're okay with us. They are. Yes. They're not thinking that we're dragging our. No, 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 no. They, know it's no, a they recognize that we're yeah. we're waiting, and we're right there, right there, finish line with USDA. All right. Okay, um, so as you mentioned earlier, I will be out of the office on Thursday and Friday at the manager's conference. Um, we on June, we have meetings scheduled for June 5th and June 12th. June 5th we have as a regular meeting. Um, on your upcoming agendas, we'll have reappointments, mm -hmm. um, those types of items, the annual business. June 12th, we have a special media, uh, meeting with the planning board to talk about the Dollar General litigation. We'll start an open session, but of course, that'll be an executive session. Yep. And then I believe we're scheduled just for a regular June 19th meeting. Um, and then we will um, have the special election on June 24th. Okay, and um, can you post right? <laughs> um, June 25th as a... Uh, um, MAPCO annual meeting for the three of us. Yes. If Dave, can you go then? There's the uh, MAPCO. MAPCO. Uh, there's a annual. Is it Massachusetts area? No, public no, health? it's a, a Mohawk area. Mohawk area public, public health, health coalition. Coalition. Uh, it's their an annual kind of meeting at Terrazzo's okay. on uh, Tuesday, the twenty fifth of June. It's a good dinner. David. It starts at four. And it goes to eight. And they do their business, and then they have dinner and uh, presentations on, you know, public health issues. For them. Well, what we what we want is people's input. To um, I'll send you the invitation. It's just we just okayed it. Um, I'm I'm, I'm going to be running yes. the meeting, but um, be oh great. Uh, um, what it is is we're 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 trying to figure out what how we're going to manage like this next decade how because public health isn't is part of every response almost any event you have is it's a public health aspect to it it's just not a public health response you think of only public health if you have emergency disease or you know flu clinics or something mm -hmm. like that but Honestly, you, it's, it should be integrated. So we're trying to make it more hazardous mitigation like we're doing all our other things. And so the idea is how, how, do, how do people envision this will be morphed for the next 10 years? Because I'm, I've been co-chair for almost 10 years. So we need to figure out somebody else and something going on. And I don't want to forget about this. Like trying to get <laughs> Yes, uh, 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 I hope this is where this fits, but 
on June 24th with a special election. Yes. It's Monday. Yes. Could somebody give a brief oversight on the two uh, ballot questions that are going to be on yes. for the special election? Do you want to mention so, that now? So public would, yeah. Yeah, have, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And would you mention the so fact that we're trying to put together a function? Thank you. With this. Yeah, great, great point, Jeff. Um, so uh, we discussed this today, actually. Um, so the two items that will be on um, the ballot will be a, they're both debt exclusion requests uh, or uh, votes, and they will be to uh, debt exclude two capital projects. One will be for the Frontier uh, Regional High School, their capital um, investment uh, that they're planning, which would be um, um, in conjunction with the other four towns, replacing the uh, athletic track. And it will also be doing um, HVAC work and redoing the media center. Um, some other um, larger capital projects that they haven't been able to fit into their budget over the last 20 years. Um, so, so that has been a big process over the year, and uh, that's culminated with a vote at annual town meeting to move ahead in each town, move ahead with that. So, so it's to debt exclude that. And then with that, um, you know, because the article talks about a $1.8 million project, Deerfield won't be all of the 1.8. It will be a portion of that. Close to roughly half, close to half, yeah, roughly 50%. So we talked about um, exactly what you're saying is having a, um, having a, you know, because we can't advocate one way or the other, you would just kind of do a, uh, a fact statement on each of them. A yes vote will, will do this. It will, you know, take this off the tax rolls once it's passed, you know, I mean, once it's paid for, and then the other, you know, a, a no will, you know, if you don't pass it. You know, right. Yeah, we, we're working with, we, we'd like to put out a fact sheet. Um, so we just are working with town council to make sure that when we do that, we obviously we can't really use correct. the town resources to advocate one way or the other. So we, we would like to do a fact sheet because we think mm -hmm. it'd be helpful, but we want to make sure we do that on the right side of the, you know, We legal, were going to have a legality. special meeting on this, weren't we? Yeah. Well, that was, so, yeah, we, and, and we are, and we, and the other, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the second, the second item, which would also be a fact sheet that we want to put out, and this is a request for the um, for the sewer project to be uh, debt excluded as well. And you know, as of annual town meeting, it was a nineteen million dollar project. Whether that ends up nineteen million or eleven or twelve or somewhere in between, um, it really depends on again on that USDA grant and what what we can really tackle. Um, but yes, there will be a fact sheet on what that, what impact that has on the residents, uh, both of these items, and what a yes vote means, what a, what a no vote means. Um, and then we hope to have a meeting, you know, if we hear very shortly, um, I'd love to have another public comment meeting with um, Dave Prickett here to, to at least address that, you know, that large part of the, you know, part of the ballot question, um, um, you know, where we hope to go forward, you know. If we, do, if we don't hear anything, we still are going to move forward, but, um, you know, kind of we, we still won't, I don't think on my behalf, I, I won't move forward anywhere until I get a solid answer from USDA, even though, you know, even though we, if we don't get any information by the 24th, I'm still, we're still moving forward, but I won't move forward without con constantly keeping the residents informed on where we're going and what we have for resources to do what. So. Will, will that fact sheet be able to include uh, estimate on basically how much is Each, going to impact the yes, taxpayers. Yes, and, and <laughs> even though we're doing, you know, going through debt exclusion. Correct. So for the average household of two hundred fifty thousand yep. people, will be able to see this is what affects. Yeah, right, so how, to how that Dave, will affect them. Yeah, similar to what he put, uh, Dave put together at the town meeting, where it had a kind of what depending on which way we go, and I right. think we're really leaning more towards USDA than SRF. Um, so, I mean, that's, I think, where the fact sheet will pretty much focus on. Well, we're hoping to yeah, get hoping. the USDA grant. Right. Yeah, that's sure. truly no, a grant. Understandable. That's going to yep. be that's yeah, well, So be we need to know how much we're getting. Yep. And hopefully we will get at least mm -hmm. $3 million. Yeah. But just so people can realize yeah. you know, the what's coming down the line. So on both of these projects. Exactly. So the they, can, they can make a, a, you know, a better Well, and we'll have... Yep. And we'll have the current interest rate. And we'll have the current interest rate. You know, it's forty year at whatever. Right, we'll right. Give us an annual payment. Right. And then, um, you know, the other the other one, the state one, they forgive you at the end, but that right. doesn't help right now. When do you think those fact sheets will be established? 
so they can be I mean, publicized? I would like to start working on them, you know, right away. Um, uh -huh. Certainly, the school one we know it's a, it's, a, it's a you know it's an obvious. Right, that's no, pretty right. straightforward. Pretty straightforward. We can we can I work on the that. Next, I think they'll be ready in the next couple weeks. Once we yeah. once we confirm sort of what the content can be, I think they can be right. yeah. you know put up. I think as far as coming up with the tax rate and the implications of that, we it may. It really depends on right. that, what we get, but right. um, as much knowledge as I can get out there, and then love to have a public session where people could come and talk about you know right. any okay. questions they might have. It's a really important thing, and it, you know people. Yeah, really I think it's very important. Yeah, uh, for the residents to know, so they can yeah, apply yeah. Safe, so they can make informed decisions. I, I and I think, to be honest with you, I think it'll be helpful. It will. I, the I mean, unknown factor out there is can be pretty scary for some it people. It can, and you know, I was very heartened to see the support that the public gave us at that annual town meeting. And this is, you know, this is also this is a big, big ask, and a lot more people will come out for a ballot than maybe come to a town meeting all night. So I'm really curious to see where where the towns, you know public feel mm -hmm. this important task needs to happen and hopefully they, you know, they support it so well and, and we'll have information you know your construction inflation is running between four and five percent so every time you delay it a year it increases the you know the cost by five percent and, right. and so you know it, well, it'll be a it's crucial update. right it's right. crucial to get moving but on the other hand we don't want to rush into this until we know mm -hmm. I mean, I am not settled on this as far as the, you know, we have exact like a third, right, we have a 13 year timeline that right. seems to be legit, then we need, now we need to focus in on the details mm -hmm. and, and is there something that we can do, you know, like when we put the clarifier in, I'm in, in my mind, I still feel like it's very important to protect the clarifier. Mm -hmm. You know, we've right. just spent a million bucks well, to replace the clarifier. Well, obviously, as we go along, so too, being able to put those put items out to, to bid of course. will be right. very helpful. Well, yeah. As uh, you know, we all know, when you get competitive bidding, you usually do better. Yep. 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 We plan to do that for sure. And so, right. uh, yeah, and we, yep. we just need to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Yep. And I just want to let a couple more things. I just want to let you know the Green Communities Project is wrapped up at the elementary school. The two new boilers have been installed and all the Great. LED updates have been done. The grants um, being closed out now and I'm doing the reporting. Um, so that project should be um, all set and it ended up being about 132,000 we should get. And Jim Barry went over last week and inspected it from Green Community. So, so um, will we have a go. report from the elementary school as to what their um, overall savings are from the lights and yeah. the, that's and all the, part of the so. yes it's part, part of the grant report, report. yes yes to, okay. yes, yes that's it would part sure of be report. nice to have i mean it's wonderful to have it for this next heating season yep. absolutely yep. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Such a great, yeah. yeah, and we also have a contract. That contract you just signed a couple weeks ago, you might remember with the FRCOG to do the annual Green Communities reporting. Yes. So we'll be in line to do the next year um, funding for Green Communities grant. Great. We'll be right on track yeah. for that. So. Good. Good. Um, um, and the solar meeting. landfill development, I just wanted to give you an update because there's been some questions about yes, that. So we that had. Meeting. Yeah, we have that out. To, we had put that out to bid several months ago, and um, you might remember that the SMART program, which the um, the bidders were uh, trying to get qualified in, so that they could get some solar credits uh, to make the financing of the project more uh, competitive. Uh, those programs got subscribed very quickly after um, they opened up, like yep. within a day. You right. know, they, they expected it to be you know weeks or a month or I don't know however long they expected this to go on. It got filled up in a day. So Western Mass no longer has any more capacity for the SMART program, meaning that the financing um, is really not, um, it's not real competitive for us to try to now pin down our bidder. Mm -hmm. um, so we have two finalists that we selected through uh, competitive bids of, of qualifications and price. We've looked at qualifications and we've selected um, a finalist, but the price, um, we can't do a price ask right now because there's, there's no, no actual program. It's all indicative, which means it's not real. Um, so we had a conference call with, with legal who confirms all of this, that the way we did the RFQ is based on both criteria. So at this point, we're still in a holding pattern. Um, DOR had a, a, a internal meeting of consultants and gave out some information and they do have a plan to proceed to come out with some additional blocks of this program that would be um, that 
vendors would be eligible for. So we're waiting for that to happen. So is, more to be revealed. Is it, um, is it worth having a meeting to educate us and from the, from the Energy Committee and the search process, is it worth um, having a meeting shortly or do, should we wait on that? I, I think I, I will know more. We are going to have, we had a conference call, not last week, but the week before. We were gonna wait for Beth to attend a DO, DOER sort of straw poll meeting. Um, that happened and now we're going to have another conference call with the committee next week. Um, David and MA certainly are, um, you know, a little bit, they'd like to get going. So it right. could be that we do need to come okay. to the board and know. talk about whether we just need to ask for a final and best, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. offer and, or right yeah. just kind of where, where that not, process right. went out who, what you thought of the two bidders sure. where we are on that because I a little bit in the dark I don't really understand the solar that much and I'd love mm -hmm. to have Right. some feedback and get educated on that a little and bit I mention it because I know Kevin has you, there's been some talk about some you know the, certainly the landfill monitoring and some Correct. corrections that need to be to happen for deficiencies that Kevin was hopeful when we were doing this landfill development um, of solar that that would happen like some of those things would would uh, but get corrected as part of the development right. it's not going to happen this that year way. we're not Correct. going to we be able to, to do the forward. construction this season so right. he may have to move along with he those does. corrections yeah. Yep. No, he does. I just wanted to let you know. So I just, okay. it's just so frustrating because we, I mean, we've been talking about getting solar on the landfill for when Dave's here. <laughs> yeah, you, and you can so you can imagine the frustration of the Energy Committee. So oh, I, I so imagine. they, yeah. I, I do, I think that at some point in I mean, the near future, I mean, it was future, a good decision not to not to commit to that group that was gonna, you know, charge us for the hookup. I mean, we were gonna end up paying. It was Western Mass Electric at that point, but oh. it was like three or four hundred thousand dollars for connection so, fees. Yeah, know, we were going to have to pay for that, and so that was a good decision not to go with that person or that group. But we've been trying ever since to get landfill, you know, our landfill covered. Yeah, and it's well, just you see like the projects going on all right. over. Oh, the place. Well, they're, and they're I just hopeful don't that it. I think one of the things they're talking about now, which I think really makes a lot of sense, is that they would that these would become a priority as opposed to green fields. They would mm -hmm. go for brown fields and landfill development. They would make that a priority right. as opposed to turning over all this, oh, we've got this other land. Oh, farmland we're, we're filling up with solar mm -hmm. and we could be putting it on somewhere that you can't use. Right. You can't exactly. farm that. Yeah. yeah. So. so that may be the next thing that they start you know, be nice. looking at. To they they really work. should because it's just ridiculous. Right. We can't seem to get this done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of an awful lot of benefits to using the brownfields. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, especially with some of the solar companies out there, because you know, you're getting your electricity a lot cheaper. Uh, they're per paying personal property taxes on the solar units. Mm -hmm. right. um, they're renting the land from you. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, there's all kinds of benefits from yep. it if it's done properly. Correct. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I know with myself, with just the solar that I have on my house. You know, mm -hmm. my electric bill last month was $11. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, nice. it's like, and that's with air conditioners and heat running in the same month. Yeah. But I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's about a weird month. It's been a weird month. Great. Um, Can I just check a couple dates with you, um, Diana? Sure. What, the, were you going to have the hazardous mitigation? Did you get a final date on we that? We haven't because that date we you and I picked didn't work for okay. um, several of the So it's not going to be the first week? It's okay. not going to be June 5th, which is, I think, the date we had picked. Yeah, um, and we, and we so also I'm waiting, looked at... So I told Kim I'd send her all the names, and then she's going to do a doodle poll. Oh, I'm okay, because I haven't emails, seen the doodle poll. But yet. no, I haven't oh. done that. I've okay. got to come up with all the fire chiefs and... Get all that over to so we're gonna emails. so we're gonna cancel the fourth, that twelve thirty and the and the fifth at three o'clock, right? Right. The okay. fourth, I don't know what that is, Carolyn. That's we, not we my had thing. We looked at that as oh, as a potential. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I just want to make sure because I that fifth, I have a June fifth. You got you're already booked pretty much. Right. Except because I have the Rivers and Road and workshop five. all day, and then right. we have uh, I have Shelburne Control at one, and then a selectman's meeting at six. So, right. I, I just. You have a break now yeah. from like three to six. Yeah. One meeting I wanted to talk about was a specific uh, Board of Health meeting. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. To to pick that date. Yes. Let's and, try to pick um, that date because we wanted to confirm with David what David's right, schedule. Because yeah. you gave me your July schedule, but you didn't give me your June schedule. The like schedule you gave me started uh, July. So. The whole year's on that schedule. Oh, it only went on July. On the card, 
I it copied only, and gave you? Yeah, it only went July. I thought it was only July through the December. And then there's nothing on the back. So maybe there was a backside and it didn't copy. But anyway. Um, so I think we were we looking at, um, I had June 10th down as a meeting but I wasn't sure what your schedule was like but and that was just a it doesn't have to be long it can be early in the well, evening to, five o'clock or something like that because you know Dick yeah no we were gonna have late. yeah we were gonna have five o'clock um June 10th yeah I have but, a, a mosquito meeting at two o'clock but five o'clock would work okay what are you around there? the 10th I am yeah. okay so let's let's do five o'clock okay um and then we, we can and that'll be just kind of a just focus on board of health stuff because we, we we I know this is a select board board of health meeting but you know there are you know, there are issues that well that I, we really I really should want be to do the some of that stuff. I want to do the tattoo right well, we yeah and then could you just check in Diana with see where Somerville's yeah because I really want to do the vaping Somerville's regs if we can and I also want to just get an update from our you know um, Health agent, where, you know what he's been working on, where where he plans, yeah. you know where we plan the year out, what we want to work on, um, what he sees for you know trending Did things. Did those ticket books come in yet, Diana? I don't think so. No, we were not able to get the kind of ticket. Though they don't make those kind of ticket books anymore, Carolyn. That was from like 11 years ago. We said they stopped making those. Okay. I think so that might be why people went to electronic permitting. I don't know if that's why, but he said most of his towns that he used to do those for all went to electronic. So do we have anything that we could write tickets? On? Well, he gave us a markup, but it's really expensive, and it doesn't give you the format that they're talking about mass general law, that self-contained thing that you're supposed to just be able to hang, like, you know what I mean? And it says violation, like it's a self-contained envelope. It doesn't come, they Big can't box. print it like that. So, so we'll so have to talk about that. Well, let's talk about that. On the but maybe there's an electronic what can method, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, ticks have been horrendous lately, I, you know. Uh, yes, ticks I, are I, terrible. I, I, I got a terrible tick bite this weekend. I want to just say that I've, I have heard from a, a, a resident that they have um, they utilized our, our rebate through UMass. So if you are bit by a tick and uh, you have you a few have, more tests left. Yeah, a few more tests left. So if you can hang on to that um, that tick and send it through UMass, they, they I think it was a really easy process from what she said. It credited whatever that was, it's credited it to them. It automatically pops up. It, yep. it says it says it's it's between the 150 and 200 dollars. It's not the 200 dollar test, and it's not the 150. But there's just one test of the 200. It doesn't do. So when you go to check all your stuff, it will get it will automatically because yeah, you're a Deerfield, Deerfield resident. It will give you the the credit, which is great. So on the total I mean, at the bottom, really dangerous stuff. So please, I had a message from a friend uh, that I'd known, went to school with, and he. Uh, Big guy, big strong guy, was knocked out for days at the hospital because he ignored the tick um, and the you know the bite, and it just he just wanted to plea to everybody, mm. just don't think you can muscle through this thing. If you see a tick, if you get bit, please have it tested. Please see the doctor. He waited too long, and it and it really it devastated his family. He's out of work, you know. It's really really tough stuff. So please. Um, be vigilant on that stuff. Use the Perinthian, right? Perinthian, yeah. Perinthian. Um, so you can get the, um, you can get the, you can go online and just get it straight, and you can dilute it yourself or spray it around your house, whatever. Um, just not on cats. Yep. Cat, it, cat, for some reason, cats can't tolerate it. Right. But if your dogs lick their legs, you might want to think about not doing it either. I don't. I, don't, it, I haven't heard anything bad, but like my daughter's dogs don't um, lick their legs. So she always sprays their legs before they go out and it keeps the ticks right off the dogs. Yep. Um, and you spray your pants. It doesn't go on your skin, it goes on your clothes. And it will stay one or two washings at least. I mean, you can go online and you can buy the clothing that has it in it, mm -hmm. but I almost think it's better to spray it yourself mm -hmm. because then it's on the outside surface, not in, in the cloth itself against right. your skin. There's no, the military's been using it since the 70s. So, I mean, they have pretty good studies to show that there's no real side effects or anything like that. But it's just better to have it on your clothes. But certainly on your shoes, your socks, the bottoms of your pants. I mean, you know, I must have hit some branch or something because I had it on my shoulder. And, it, you know, you, you just really got to be on, um, 
you know, you got to pay attention and do tick checks all the time. Yep. But if you send it into UMass, what happens is they will give, within a couple days, they email you back with the results. Um, they're very, very good. It's usually a 48-hour turnaround. Um, but what it does give us as a town is what's happening in Deerfield. Mm. And it, tells, it shows us that we're about 36% so far of every tick has Lyme disease. And, it, and what is concerning is we're getting these secondary bacterial right. um, infections that are, are growing from um, when we first did this, we first got a grant um, a few years ago. It was around 2%, but it's now almost up to 7% of these se secondary bacterial infections, which, which are actually worse than Lyme. Mm -hmm. And they can be passed within 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very scary. And, and everyone needs to be very serious about this. And I rant and yep. rave about this every year, no, it's but it's, it really is, it's, it's an epidemic of climate change and we have the mosquitoes and we have the ticks and it's terrible so is there any uh, public comment tonight anybody anything to say i want to thank you all Fight for coming the ticks. yeah <laughs> oh we have a i had a question i recently purchased uh, 45 eastern avenue it was a family home wonderful since 54. so in any case uh there is a drainage ditch in back and uh, like this uh, that drainage ditch, I know it's been exceptionally bad the, the fall, yep. winter. It's and um, my, uh, my name is Victor Warius, too. Uh, Thank you. But uh, any case, um, it's been quite a few years, and Mrs. Bechtai was talking to her today, and she said that at least 40 years, and she's pretty, pretty, pretty sharp on that. But uh, since the, the ditch has been uh, Clean, gone, right. So, right? Yep. and I noticed that the, the, in our deed, it's uh, the town has got the, the, the responsibility or whatever for mm -hmm. doing, maintaining the ditch. And uh, I was just wondering what process yes. we have to go through. I understand that there's a budgeting and, there, and so forth. No, no, it's actually it's, not a budgeting issue. It's a permitting issue. Um, we, the town hasn't cleaned the ditches since, I think, 83, 1983 or 1984. And what we did um, is attempted a few years ago when we had um, Hurricane Bob go through, I think it was. Anyway, there's all kinds of flooding around Bloody Brook, and we were trying to clean out Bloody Brook because people have a tendency to put stuff into the brook, and you know it fills up naturally as well as leaves get full, pushed in and stuff like that. So we actually tried to clean it out a little bit, and we got in trouble with DEP. This was, um, I don't know, five, I don't, it must have been eight years ago or so. Anyway, what we've done is um, the only way to handle this is we've formed a mosquito district that gives us the ability, the town, to go in and clean um, ditches. And so we have... Um, we, we got some grants over the years, and the town has supported every year, uh, the last few years, a mosquito um, budget item. And um, what we've done is document the and trap. And as a matter of fact, um, the Department of Public Health is going out and will be trapping um, earlier this year because it's been, this has been so. the wettest year on record. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is it's, it's been so wet that it's actually the lava has been washed away. So there is actually lesser mosquitoes at the moment. But there's the been lava. so wet <laughs> that um, we're really worried this year could be very bad, just like 2011 when we had some Tripoli and um, West, and we have, we have West Nile every year now. So um, West Nile is, is, is mo most, um, the most vulnerable population is the, our elder population, over 60, and um, very young babies. So we are very concerned about that being um, a regular uh, disease now in town. But what we've done is formed a mosquito district from Burniston, which is on the Vermont line, down to West Springfield on the Connecticut line, and it's called the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District. And then we, by legislation, we have the ability to go in and um, clean out some of the ditches. However, we have been working since November to um, hire a supervisor that will work with our highway departments in our towns. And um, we haven't found someone who is qualified yet. So it's been extremely frustrating. Um, so we're sort of, 
We have grant money. We have about $130,000 in grant money for the first year's supervisor salary and benefit package. So we can um, hire someone if we can get someone. And then they have to go out and work with all the communities up and down the valley to you know, um, pay in and support his salary for next year. It's or a good opportunity his. if anybody knows. Yeah. Jeff? But we were hoping to qualify, get someone qualified. Just to follow up on that, uh, with being more or less the leader of this Mosquito District, is there by any way and chance of uh, tying into a grant for a mini excavator instead of having the town pay for it, have, well, have the Mosquito District pay for it? The, just uh, the thought. Just to let you know, um, the town has started cooperating with some of the districts in town more than it used to. And from my understanding, the water district is willing to exchange time with their mini excavator yep. with the town if we can exchange some of our equipment with them. Yep. Is it, they've got a new one there that they're working on. on so there's always a solution. There's a solution, yes. yep. yeah. Yep. Communication. Good thinking, yes. good thinking though. Yep. You, you can't go through and just dredge out everything, but you can go through and clean out in strategic, and, and, you, and, and we have the habitat laid out in town, so um, where we're trapping mosquitoes that potentially would be the ones that would carry disease. So by, by the town, we, we've, um, it's gonna be like $5,000 that we have to chip in for the testing this year. The first, first two years, was eleven thousand dollars because we hired an independent um, contractor, and then um, the state wants us to do this because there was no testing up and down the valley. Right. So we got two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of grants. They've been giving us free testing. So we actually, as a town, haven't spent any money for the last couple of years. But what we um, need to do is is figure out a budget and hire somebody and. And um, we have all kinds of equipment. We have all kinds of traps now and all, all this stuff, but we don't have the person. And so, and we, I mean, we've been interviewing people. We've had really qualified, good academic people that were scientists, but that's not the person you need, a field person to go out and work with the highway departments. And so. Yeah, mean, meanwhile, the trees are growing and yes. up the ditch. And yep. Standing water is there. and. Uh, I understand. I We're putting in hundreds this, of hours. Really I'm serious. This came from the, the fact of the storm water yes. drainage, and then with the construction, and who knows how that how, oh, how yeah. groundwater and things like that. I mean, it, you know, all of this, and now we go. We're held up by mosquito mm -hmm. uh, testing, which is the uh, uh, whatever. So we really I mean, haven't started. Um, Clearing any drain no, 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 well, because we're still in the evaluation. We, you, well, yeah, the mosquito needed, district but. gives us the, the legal ability to go in, and we are exempt from most wetlands mm, regulations. You still have some wetlands, still have yeah. some but wetlands. Most There's still people, some, but it's not as easy as you think it is, still. But, but, but pretty, it gives us it, an avenue it is, it is where pretty, we didn't have one before. It's pretty clear if you have a public health threat, which we do, and so, um, and it's documented. And um, so it's coming. That's all I can say. And a meeting, you know, we're meeting every other week. And we're trying to solve this problem, so. Somebody out there has got to want this I know. job. Man, I know. It's really frustrating. So um, with that, thank you all for coming. I'll take a um, motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.